Do I have this on right the right way? Yes. I have this on the right way, right? No, but like, but it's. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes. It is my great joy to be the minister with this congregation of people of all ages at all stages of life. And in this community, we strive to live into our mission of embracing freedom, loving wholeheartedly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the wholeness and the healing of the world. We are here and unapologetically in support of all and welcoming all people of all ethnicities and races, situations and abilities, sexual orientation, gender identities, and politics. We advocate for human rights, and we strive to be good stewards of this earth. So in living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first Europeans came down the Illinois River. And so we take a moment in worship to recognize the Peoria people for who they were and for who they are today. I want to thank folks for joining us in person and online. Uh, we know, we know how much it means to gather together, to expand our circle of care and, and offer more kindness and more connection. So if you are new, please help us get to know you, stay for visiting, uh, and coffee in Fellowship Hall if you're with us in person, and also on Zoom if you're joining us online. And also, as certainly as we end the service, as we're on our way out, I want to invite folks to make sure to, to kind of turn and greet the person next to you as we're finishing, just so we have that extra moment of connection in this, in this time. Uh, and also, if you would please uh, be sure to turn your respective devices to worship mode, whether vibrate or silent, it's up to you. Um, I want to say a little something about today's service. Um, in this moment, we're bringing some of the uh, kind of old practices of the Celts of Britain and Europe into a contemporary experience of Samhain and All Hallows' Eve. Uh, in recognizing that autumn as a time of harvest, where plants die, where the uh, Folks are gathering and preparing for the shift into winter. It is also a time when the veil between life and death grows thin. And so we offer this time for remembering our beloved dead. Uh, the tables before us hold candles. Uh, and also there is room aplenty if you brought photos, mementos, or a little something um, that signifies the folks that, who are in your memory. Uh, and later in the service, you'll be invited to add written names, and we'll share those names as well. I also have a few notes for things that are upcoming in, uh, for today, uh, for the next coming weeks. One being, uh, well, let me just add that we had, in case you didn't know, weren't aware, last night we had a fabulous haunted forest. Yes. Haunted forest that was created by many, many hands, a lot of lights, and a lot of spooky stuff. Uh, and basically, if you don't, we have the kind of turned the trail out in the woods behind the church into a full scale Halloween experience. Uh, so, if it's still a little bit dry uh, after the service, you are welcome to take a walk through the woods and get a little sample of what we were doing last night. We had a lot of people here. The parking lot was full, the building was full, the forest was full. Yes. Uh, also, I want to note that uh, I want to invite folks to uh, next Sunday after afternoon, about 1.30 to maybe 3, 3.30 or so, we're invited to the First Christian Church up on University Ave. There's a workshop there with Matt Gross from Bread for the World. He is leading an experience uh, about the racial wealth gap in our, uh, in our society. 
This experience is part of our work with the Faith Coalition for Racial Equity, and it is open to folks, certainly adults, but also high school seniors are welcome as well. And we want to give Matt a good sense of how many people. So if you would see Steve Fairbanks to RSVP uh, today, tomorrow or so, then we would give Matt the best count we can. And also, uh, another thing we need to want to invite you to RSVP for, the, U the Unitarian Universalist Advocacy Network of Illinois is celebrating its 10th anniversary. We'll be gathering at Abraham Lincoln UU Church in Springfield on Saturday. Uh, we are invited and welcomed, and Reverend Gianni Foliano, who's a member at this congregation, will be one of the panelists that day. Uh, people can attend online or in person. And so if you'd like to attend, uh, whether online or in person, please see me or Joyce Herent um, by today or tomorrow as well. All right. Now, let us enter into our worship. We begin with our opening hymn number 389, gathered here in the mystery of the hour. We'll listen once and sing through. Please rise and body your spirit. invite Mary Mahalan Kafar up for our opening words. Our reading this morning is United by Story and Bound by Love by Andrea Hawkins Camper. Gather we now in this space this time when the wheel turns and the veil shatters. Gather we now to remember, to grieve, to prophesy, to complete our harvest before the long dark comes. Gather we now to tell old stories and sing old songs, to be as we have always been, the voice of our people eternal. Gather we now to celebrate that which was, which is and that which will be. Gather we now, as we have always done, united by story and bound by love. Amen. Let me invite Bill Ordaz, Isaac Ordaz, and Tim Harold up for our chalice lighting. From Reverend Florence Kaplow, the former minister with our sibling congregation in Urbana-Champaign. As we kindle this the flame, we honor and remember those who have passed into the mystery. Their brightness lives on in our vision, their courage lives on in our commitments, and their love continues to bless the world through us.
As we gather in this space and time, it strikes me every time we gather how much we have received from the collective gifts of those who have come before. For those who had been, we are able to be gathered today. These offerings of service and care and money of the past are in a direct line into our lives, whether this is the first Sunday you've joined us or whether you've been here for generations. We receive such gifts, contribute our part for our own sake and also then for that of our children. And then what we gather is passed on forward to the people we will never meet. It is good to make an offering in that line whenever we gather in worship. And we also, as part of our practice of honoring the gifts that are given, we practice sharing our plate as well. One third of the undesignated offering goes to a given agency uh, service organization here in Peoria. There's one we name every month at this point. And for October, uh, this last Sunday, we finish up our giving to Lula. Lula is an uh, organization that is providing support for those who are unhoused or have food insecurity, and it's volunteer run. So every donation really makes an enormous difference in their work and in the capacity. They are, at this point, already buying uh, more hand warmers for the cold nights, for example, and they provide hygiene items and food and much more. They're also working in partnership with area groups uh, such as Imago Day Church and Jolt Harm Reduction to serve the range of needs of folks who are some of the most vulnerable in our community. So as you give, please consider offering to share the plate. One third go, will go to Lula, two thirds goes to the church operating. Um, please use the envelopes to make a distinction about your gift uh, and also by all means give online as well. And as we were, we are, this is an all ages service, so we're going to put them together this moment. I want to say as the, after the plates have passed in this music for meditation, that you are welcome to then come forward and light candles for our joys and sorrows table as well. And now may the ushers please come forward.
We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted, when we are in trouble and afraid, when we despair, in temptation and need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish great purpose and cannot do it alone. We need one another in the hour of our success, when we look for someone to share our triumphs, and in the hour of defeat, when with encouragement we might endure and rise again. We need one another when we come to die and would have gentle hands prepare us for this journey. All our lives we are in need and others are in need of us. This is the time for sharing of joys and sorrows of the congregation. I want to thank everybody again who was part of the trunk or treat last Saturday. It was a lot of fun. We had treats and fun and many Halloween-y spirited games and vehicles. And I want to thank again everybody who made the haunted forest happen. It was truly a collaboration and a collective work. And also thank you for all the gifts, the donations of candy. You came through really well. Thank you. And I hear, I think we'll need to follow up on this a little bit more. Pat Harris tells us that as of like this moment that our congregation won a community service award as the third best place to worship in Peoria. Cool. We don't tend to do the Trinity here, but I'll take third. That's good. We're good. You know. And let me turn to, I'm going to surprise Mary Mahal and Kafar for just a minute here because I want to offer our regard. Mary has been a part of the congregation for um, a while and has been such a dedicated member. Mary, would you come up and just, I just want to get people, I'm just, I'm going to surprise and I hope you're just willing to go me along. And I want to do it at this point of the service instead of the very end. So Mary's been part of the congregation for a while and have been you kind of jumped in whole body and heart and and you're moving as of this week. Huh? Yeah. This Friday. is as of Friday. You're, this is your last Sunday with us for probably some time, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you and best wishes on all the things you're trying to look forward to. Thank you. I'm going to miss each and every one of you know that you will always be in my heart. This is my church family. Okay. Thank you, Mary. And now let us extend our circle of care. I want to offer love and compassion to Terrence Lindsay and the whole Lindsay family. This has been such a remarkable and hard year since the death of their son, Owen, earlier this year. And we just want to hold them in our hearts, especially in this moment. I want to offer a note of sympathy and condolences to Kathy McNeil and her family. You may have seen in the Friday news that Kathy and her family were gathered around Kathy's mother, um, who was in critical care. Well, sadly, uh, later on Friday, uh, Kathy's mother died. And we're holding Kathy and all of her family in our hearts in this time. They had gathered in Arkansas, brothers, sisters, all the spouses, and so much. And Kathy is asking for positive wishes in this time. I also want to turn to our larger world. To hold the uh, community of Lewiston, Maine, in our hearts. 
as they struggle in the aftermath of the deadly shooting there on Thursday. You know, I know that the shootings are more common, and this is by itself a terrible thing. But it is also true that they come to the places that are quiet and places where people are simply trying to enjoy and live their lives. Let us keep the folks in Maine in our hearts. This was a real shock to everybody. In the much larger scale, I invite us to keep in our hearts the Palestinians and the Israelis caught up and dying in their own generational conflict. It is becoming particularly brutal and severe, especially, especially in this time. Let us hold one more moment of quiet, one more shared breath, knowing that the circle of care that is around us is, can hold all that is with us, all that is in our hearts. I invite you to pause for this moment and breathe with me. Shalom, salam, and blessed be. I invite Jesse forward for our story. Some of you may know, I feel my feelings in my eyes a lot. And some days, the joys and the sorrows are hard on her heart. The story today is called The Fall by Jamie Hinson Rieger. Once upon a time, there was a leaf who lived on an old oak tree deep in the woods maybe like our woods out there. Leaf had a good life. He enjoyed watching the squirrels scamper. He enjoyed gossiping with the ants about the goings on in distant forest. He liked swaying in the breeze with his friends or soaking up the sun on a brilliant summer day. And beyond all else, Leaf loved living in the presence of tree. One day he noticed his friend on the branch right over there was becoming a little orange. Cool trick, he said. How are you doing that? No idea, said his friend. It's just happening. Well, looks good on you, said Leaf. And throughout the week, his friend went from orange to a vibrant red. And one day, when Leaf was busy talking with Robin, he looked over and said, oh, what happened to my friend? He's gone. Robin said, they probably fell. You do that this time of year. Leaf said, what? What do you mean? You know, said Robin, it's autumn, time for the leaves to turn colors and fall to the ground. 
Fall? Off tree? This was news to him. Yes, said Robin, you all do that every year. Well, I have a lot of questions about that, said Leaf. Ask the tree, said Robin. So that is what Leaf did. Tree, he said. Am I really going to fall off of you? Yes, said Tree. But I don't want to. I'm sorry. Do I have to? Yes. Will it hurt? No. Next year, there will be new leaves. It is a circle. But what is to become of me? The wind will take you. Where? And Tree began to explain. You may stay very near, right here in the forest. You may fall beside me and be among all of the leaves you have known. Or you may be carried far away. You may land in a stream that feeds a river. You may even end up in the great ocean. No one knows what your journey will be. Maybe the wind knows, but it is not telling. You're quite the philosopher, grumbled Leaf. I think I'm going to stay for a while. All things are connected, said Tree. You can never leave me. You will become a part of me in a new way, as we are both a part of this earth. Stay a while if you must. So Leaf stayed, and one by one, and sometimes in great bunches, the leaves around him started to turn and fall to the ground. Each one turned its own striking shade and floated away on the wind. Leaf stayed. Come with us, called the leaves. Uh, nah, said Leaf. Eventually, all the branches on the tree were bare, except for Leaf. It grew quite cold in the forest, and the animals began to go underground and huddle in their winter homes or migrate on to warmer climates. Leaf was alone in the cold, deep silence of the woods on a winter night. But Leaf still had tree. You will always have me, said tree. And presently, the forest was blanketed in snow. What's happening under there, asked Leaf. Well, the leaves are turning into earth to nourish the soil and feed new living things. It is a circle. Leaf knew then that he did not belong alone on a barren tree, and his edges began to become tinged with an orangey red. And over the next few days, he released his color until he was entirely red. It's hard to let go, said Leaf. It is a firmed tree. 
Wind, where will you carry me? asked Leaf. There's only one way to know, whispered the wind. Into what will I be reborn? Into everything, whispered the night sky. I have loved being your leaf, leaf said to tree. You will always be my leaf, said tree. And leaf fell, and wind carried him, and the forest was silent and still. Please rise and body your spirit and join me for our hymn number 1002, Comfort Me. It's in the Teal Hymnal if you'd like to follow along with the music. Seated. 
Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. I want to tell you about a little bit about the celebration from some of our Celtic ancestors and friends had at the end of the growing season. This celebration continued and is carried on by so many folks today, practitioners of Wicca, witchcraft, earth-centered, so many more traditions. There is a reconnection and a believing in the spiritual presence and the healing power of nature, a deep, deep understanding of relationship of the cycles and seasons around us in which we live, even in this modern age. And those celebrations and that connection has been refreshed again and again in our society over the years and has continued to be encountered and engaged with. And this point where in this time and in this place, you have contemporary practitioners, pagans, Wicca, Wiccans, those who practice witchcraft and much more, but still connect and reconnect. And one of the most powerful times in this connection is that of the celebrating of nature and the end of the harvest when the plants are gathered in and the plants that remain wither and die back into the earth. And in that time, in that time, it's not just about the, the plants around us or the corn, the vast cornfields, if you drive through at this time of year, but it's also believed that the spirits of our ancestors and relatives and maybe some of even our creature friends, those who have died, are very near with us and may want to us to want to let us know that they are at peace. And in that spirit, we have a ceremony um, that is recognized, a celebration recognized and called Samhain, usually around on November 1st, following the night of Halloween. Halloween meaning that night before the spirits talk to us. And at Samhain, not only is the harvest blessed, but everyone welcomes the spirits of their loved ones and their ancestors that are no longer with us in person. And all year round, contemporary pagans believe that the spirits of their loved ones are just on the other side of that veil between life and death. And this moment, this moment is when that space between is, well, it's even thinner. And we are all held, whatever our belief and spiritual practice, we also know that we are all held within the great mystery of life, the mystery that some people call the Holy Spirit, the mystery that some people call God, the spirit of love and justice and healing, the spirit of life that is part of the emergence and the living and the dying and the cycles that come through again and again. We are all connected to everything there is and ever was as we all come from the great same star dust into this moment. We are all connected to our ancestors, our loved ones who have died, for we carry not only whatever they may have passed to us physically, but we carry their memories. We carry who they were, who they were for us. We recognize the sights and the indications of the season of change. As we heard the leaf watching their neighbor kind of lose the green and come into the orange, the leaf itself eventually agreeing to lose its green and become the red that it was and then finally let go of the branch of the tree which it loved and lived.
I want to invite us into reflection again as I sing again the song, one that came to me from my youth experience in Unitarian Universalism, but I understand it is much longer and older than that. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. Everyone dies. Every one of us. It is 100%. Those who came before us no longer are living, and one day it will become our turn. It is a mystery as to what exactly gives us that spark of life and then what takes our life away. And as we hold all that is within the mystery around us and within us, we take this moment. It is good to remember our dead ancestors, those who are with us still in our memories, in the stuff of our bodies recognizing that we even move and think like some of them before. It is good to remember our beloved dead, the beings with whom we connected in this life. It is good to remember the joys shared, the sorrows endured, the lessons and gifts that we exchanged in the course of simply being in proximity. And we offer this moment, this time, this Samhain, when that time between life and death is so thin, that membrane is just on the other side. To remember not just those who have died and the gifts, but to remember the preciousness of life itself. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. We're going to have a time here to remember our beloved dead collectively. We have a table set before us. If you've brought a memento or a photo, there's certainly space for it. But we'll have a chance for folks to write a name, a presence. Sometimes the people who are remembered dead are not people we even know their names. We can write something for that too. We have leaves gathered and we'll collect those leaves and share those names. We also, in this moment, in invoking the names and in pausing here, we invite our loved ones to this table, that we can feel the presence around us still, that we might remember those times spent together, to remember what is in our hearts and the love that surrounds us still and always. And we'll have candles to light for those spirits as well. And we have one more way to handle remembering in this moment. And I want to ask uh, Tony and Vicki to come and say more about what we also have here. It was part of last night's haunted forest as well. Good morning. Last evening at our Haunted Forest event, the Keepers of the Great Grove Cups chapter began a very interesting project with an ancestor stoneworking. We invited people to participate by first calling into mind the memory of an ancestor. Next, we asked them to select a stone that best represented the type of relationship they had or continue to have with that loved one on the other side of the veil. Four different colors of stones were presented, each color with a specific meaning. 
we first presented a white stone, white as the color of the dove of peace and love. This stone was chosen if their relationship with their ancestor was one of peace. They feel a sense of peace in their passing, and the memories they have of their loved one still bring happiness to their heart. Next, a frosted stone was presented. This stone represented a question. Those who chose this stone felt there was something unclear, something left lingering, something they wish they could have said, something they wish they'd known. Or perhaps they had something going on in their lives and they really would like to ask that ancestor's input and advice and guidance. Next, a blue stone was shown. Blue, a color known to bring calming and also brings to mind the healing nature of water. This stone was chosen if their ancestor's passing left one or possibly more unresolved difficult matters or if they're unable to still feel any peace after their passing and a need for healing was still felt. Lastly, a clear stone was presented. This stone was chosen by those who feel a direct link to their ancestry may have been lost, a disconnect to their heritage, or if their lineage was unknown to them and they desired to rebuild a connection to their unknown ancestors. Having chosen their stone, we ask the participants to hold them between their hands. Think of that happy memory or that question that needed asked or that thing that needed to come off your chest to start the healing process or that wish to reach out to those unknown to them with whom they still share a bond of blood. With these in mind, they drew in a breath and blew the intention into the stone. Finally, these stone were then placed into a vessel before us today. The result of this working gives us a fascinating visual insight into the types of connections people have today with their ancestors. This is a project we would like to repeat each year and perhaps see how those relationships may have changed or possibly improved. In any case, each stone ultimately represents a someone, someone whose life, whose labors, and whose love shaped our own lives before we were even born. This special time of year and this act of remembrance are testaments to the adage that our loved ones are gone but never forgotten. On behalf of the keepers of the Great Grove, we extend the same invitation to everyone here to participate in this working. I will be available to assist with instructions if anyone needs it. Thank you. So let us enter into this time of reflection and the sharing of names. Sherry will play some music as we gather and come forward a little at a time. Write a name, light a candle, and Choose a stone if you wish. Let us enter into this moment together.
I want to share some of the names that we have been hearing, and I'll begin first with those who are part of the congregation who have died in the past year. It includes Mary Lawler, Lisa Offutt, Adam Sloan, Larry Miller, Sue Ellis, Owen Lindsay, Gary Jameson, Bonnie Hedges, and Ron Love. I also want to include folks who were members of the congregation and are connected still. George Hopkins, Del Carpenter, and Alan Reagans, whose family has a long connection with this congregation. And we also remembered Jason fought. He had died a little while back. We hadn't had a chance to have his memorial, but we did in the garden this year. Let me include some of the names we're sharing here. Great-grandma, Aunt Sue, Grandpa, Zadian. Grandmama, Jean Malone, Grandpa Mitchell, Baba, Tom Rowland, Larry, Stephen, Doris Rowland. Braden Herta, Donnie Dickerson, Mom and Kelly, Ken Kolb, Owen, Anonymous. There are many of those, I think. Gordon Schull, Joe, Lotus Phillips, Grandma, Linda Tatum, Jane, Mason Loy, Eva, Alan Simmons, Russell Buster, Ramon Huerta, Jacqueline Buster, Katrina, Al and Kay Allen. Lynn and Jim, Grandma Joyce, Bob Effinger, Lenny Jr., All my immediate family. Mom, Dad, and Mosey. Eleanor Johnson Buren. Richard Harting, Jr. Annette Lorraine Reyes. 
Babesia McManus. Dave and Rosie, Pat and Tim, and Ginger, I believe. It is something to have been here and welcoming all of these presences among us. And those who were included in the stones offered today. It is no small thing to end, come towards the end of the service with such a list and a pile of leaves of its own sake, too. Let me invite Michaela Thomas to come forward for our closing reading for this remembrance time before we enter our last hymn. They once, they once dwelled among us, the people, beings of memory. They once knew who, they who knew us, they who taught us, they who heard us, they who loved us. They touch our lives time and again through their presence and their absence. Through familiar scents and favorite songs, through old stories and renewed sorrow. As the earth turns and leaves fall, we reach back to renew the bonds between us. With hearts and hands open, we hold on to love even stronger than death. We reach back in gratitude and understanding. Without our time together, the pain, the joy. We, we would never be who we are today we would have but little to pass on ourselves. Without fear, with thanksgiving, with hope for all that awaits. We remember those who have gone before. We honor the circle of life and death and are placed within the sacred thread. Thank you. Please rise and body our spirit for our closing hymn, There is a Love. We will listen and then sing through each verse once. We lit this chalice in honor of life's sacred dance of living and dying. 
Its flame reminded us of those who have passed, to us fragments of holiness. As we leave and as we send this light into the world, may we take a small spark with us. May the spark of this flame remind us that we too are participants in this dance. May the firmness of the earth be yours. May the flow of the water be yours. May the freedom of the air be yours. May the fierceness of the fire be yours. May all the gifts of life above and below be with you and now remain with you always. Blessed be. <laughs>